The first thing I want to cover here um, is a, a technique called opening out, which you're probably familiar with, maybe under a different name, but we'll go over it. But it's a simple little concept, but kind of like the bouncing ball contains, you know, everything you need to know about spacing and timing and things like that. I feel like opening out kind of contains everything you need to know about um, facial posing and what drives what. Um, so it's a simple little concept, but it gets you through a lot and you can fall back on it a lot. Um, so let's have a look what I'm talking about here with some demos. Um, what it refers to is here, Poe would technically, his face would be opening out this way. And how this is achieved, another way to think of it is a squash side of the face, squashing towards this middle line, and a stretch side of the face, where our, we're stretching on this side. So the cheek mass pushing down, the brow, the eye, everything pushing up, and the opposite on this side, the cheek, the low lid pushing up, and here the brow, the up lid pushing down, squash side. What this does is give us some nice design lines where instead of having you know, our character who comes in like this, where everything is exactly in the middle, which is boring and um, mathematical, is our center line. Once we squash up this way, the pushing of the cheek up pulls the mouth across a bit as well. So it pulls it off center. So pushing towards that knot here, squashing towards it, pulls the mouth off center and the nose off center a little. And so what we end up with, squashing, this is a masterpiece, these drawings are available on Etsy for a small price. No, I kid. Uh, um, hopefully they get the, the point across here. Now what we have is a nice bend to the face and a nice flow. You see these flowing lines, um, much nicer than this. But if you just kind of, you know, your face comes in and it looks a bit boring, and you just you know move a few things around, you're going to get something uncohesive. Whereas this is very cohesive. This muscle is driving this muscle. It all you know checks out in terms of anatomy, um, but it also just looks good, which is always the main thing with animation. You know you can really get um, dragged down. There are a lot of anatomy and musculature classes that I've gone to um, at DreamWorks and other places, and people who are experts on that stuff. But when it comes down to it, um, you know, we don't have a mandibular, fibular contraction, muscle control on the rig. We just have move the mouth left. So it has to just look good is the main thing. Um, if it's driven by real anatomy, that's great. We need that too. But essentially it doesn't matter a damn if it doesn't look good. Uh, and this looks good, it creates clean, harmonious lines. You'll sometimes hear it referred to as the DreamWorks face, which is, uh, an untrue slur. Uh, it's also a Disney face and a Pixar face and an ev everywhere face. Uh, but this is the DreamWorks face when they do the, hmm. uh, the attitude version, but it's used in you know 2D everything. What it also does is when we open out, we're opening out this way, say, it directs the audience's attention to say, this side is the important side. This is the center of attention. This is where the character's looking. This is what's important. So when you have a conversational thing going on or your character looking at something particularly, you open out in the direction towards the thing that they're looking at. Very, very rarely would you break that concept and go the other way. Sometimes when you're like suspicious, like, oh, what are you up to? You might open out the other way, but really rarely, rarely, rarely. That's generally going to create lines that are non-harmonious and drive the eye in a kind of confusing pattern on the screen, if that makes sense. Um, now, it doesn't just apply to uh, sassy pandas and, and sassy donkeys doing the DreamWorks face. And we squash and we stretch. Um, 
it, it can work on a variety of different expressions. It can work on any expression, basically. It's just a, a matter of placement of the face. So here we can see she's angry here, but you can see she's opening out. It's a lot more subtle, but there's a nice subtle bend to the face. The eyes are, you know, this side's bigger than this side. Um, very nice. One thing to note is you can have a lot of asymmetry on the brows, but with the eyes, you have to be gentle. You can only have a little bit of difference between the eyes themselves. Some cartoony characters, yes, you can go a little crazier with it, but generally human characters in particular are gonna feel broken very quickly if this eye is too much different size from this eye. So you do most of the asymmetry on the brow and a little bit on the eyes. That's a good, good um, trick to note. Now, sometimes you won't just be opening out where everything is perfectly you know, fitting to this formula, but these concepts that I'm talking about where if the cheek goes up, then it likely causes the lower lid to go up, like here, and the nose corner to go up, they all go up together because it's a push here. You can see in this, this expression, the expression itself is driving, um, driving these changes. It's not a simple opening out. Um, it's a little more complex. He's sneering on this side like a, what, uh-huh. Uh, and this mouth corner coming up is driving the nose corner up, is driving the cheek up, is driving the low lid up. So you can see how these pieces, the upper lip, the nose edge, the cheek and the eye often all move together. If one comes down, they often all come down. So whenever you're having trouble with a face, you know, not feeling fleshy enough, you do a pass where you look at this stuff and maybe you see, oh, I've got the, the mouth going and the cheek going, but it's not affecting this nose corner or this low lid. And it's a big move. So it probably would affect those in this instance. People do sort of do this in real life as well. You can see here. He's doing the DreamWorks face. Um, doesn't just apply to humanoid characters, you know, often you want to break up. And this is a more realistic show. How to Train Your Dragon is kind of closer to visual effects than animation or pushes into that territory, especially the later movies, in my opinion, um, which is cool. You know, it's got its own style. Uh, but my point is that this opening out, even on a dragon, you know, they're using the same techniques here to drive visual interest to get some asymmetry, get away from that boring symmetry that looks off and dead, um, but not randomly. I just wanna show this on a kind of variety of faces here. One, just to show you, it's not the DreamWorks face. Uh, there's a, these are all Pixar characters, but two, it's just nice examples um, of different types of characters doing this. You know, he's opening out that way. <laughs> This one, see how this one looks a little stiff? Because it's straight lines, straight lines, straight lines. So not really opening out. Sometimes if your rig is pretty limited, you can use the head angle to kind of suggest. Again, this guy looks very stiff and grotesque because he's very even. And that would really be the first thing you do when you get a rig like this, where it's, oh crap, I've got a car and it, it feels so rigid and, and simple and characterless. How do I you know, bring some asymmetry and character to this? Like Mater, for instance, is probably the most push but if you look at the bend, but if you were just randomly sort of moving things around, trying to make him look goofy or whatever, you'd probably end up with something pretty messy. But if you start with this kind of basis, like, oh, all right, I've got my opening out, I'm gonna flow that way. Let me hang, hang these main pieces off that and then I'll give an expression on top of this, but this general placement gives you a nice flow and brings some life to something that might otherwise feel very stiff and rigid. Obviously a huge amount is character design and things like this, but this stuff really helps. These are the things you can control, you know, you can't control the character design. Cool, uh, so hopefully that, excessive isn't too excessive in terms of explaining this but as i said i think it's a microcosm that kind of contains a lot of the facial posing stuff you know 
that if you push this up, it's going to push the low lid up. It's probably going to pull the mouth up and so on. It's all there. Mm -hmm. 